Hi, friends. Welcome to the weekly stock market update. Also answering the question, if the markets were up 55% last year, why was your pension not? And we're going to go and deep dive into that. Plus, as well as the weekly stock market update, a few portfolio reviews that people have sent in and the stocks that I like in my market uh, uh, analysis. So let me know. You can see and hear me. <laughs> Line bike stuck in traffic. No, I've been at my desk actually most of the day. Thank you, Watford. Evening all. Hi, all uh, as well. So the, there's a probably about a 60 second lag. So when I get on at six o'clock, you might get on at a minute past. I hope that's okay for everybody. Now, uh, please grab a pen and paper and probably also a camera phone or something because uh, you will want to uh, take photos and videos of things. Now, I'm going to share my screen. I've got about 107 slides to share with you. So every week it just gets more and more value packed so thank you for your uh patience uh as well look you look out of breath i always look out of breath it's called being fat kp uh now this is not individual investment advice okay uh, because i don't know your personal circumstances what it is instead is my views i'm going to give you information and education all right, that's what I'm going to do. So, getting into it, I don't have a conflict of interest with you. I'm not. I'm not a retail fund manager. So I'm not going to try to sell you a fund and saying, "Hey, buy my Asia fund or my Spanish fund or whatever." Um, and equally, I don't have a brokerage. So, if I think it's worthwhile sitting out of the market, I'll tell you it's worthwhile sitting out of the market. Uh, because that's the right thing to do, as happened in 2022. Uh, that was the right thing to do, and that's what happened. Wow, New York, fantastic. Most people will be from the UK. And let me know if it's your first time on here as well, please. Okay. Now, what else have we got? Well, we've got some new forecasts. This is from uh, HSBC. doesn't mean they're necessarily right. Uh, the most bullish forecast we have for the S&P 500 is... 5,400 uh, for it. So from the current levels uh, up to 5,400. And the worst is 4,200, which is JP Morgan. They're pretty bearish. Uh, great. I mean, if you're a client of theirs, you're thinking, wow, oh, fantastic. Might, might want to switch somewhere else. Uh, hey, Mithun, Barry, KP, everyone else. Uh, and everyone else who hasn't commented yet. Sarjeet, James, Derek, Andrew, Barry, Ravi, you're on. John, uh, Jag, Hugh, and everyone else. Now, I'll tell you what I think. And this is my bullish forecast. You should be able to see on screen. Uh, this is Visa, by the way. I'm going to give you my S&P 500 one in a second. So the, during this, I'm going to give you projections where I can of things. And uh, sometimes I'm going to give you little snippets. This isn't my most uh, uh, best case stock. This is quite mediocre because it's only 20% projections for the year ahead. Only 20. And that means it's not really that good for my portfolio. Would I buy it today? No, because 20% is not enough for me. And you'll see why going forward. We have a higher hurdle rate. So it can't make the first team, which is my portfolio. Uh, why am I showing you it? Well, because 12 months are coming up on this. And over the last 12 months, it's given me its return and that's been fine whatever it's given uh but it's it, it's partly there to give you an idea of that for me 20 percent isn't enough because there's a lot more to be had and if you're looking at 15 to 20 stocks in your portfolio your first team as it were and you're selecting these from i'm just going to show you uh, uh you're selecting these out of ten thousand. Okay, as I do, well, guess what? A 20% projection ain't going to make the cut, I'm afraid. It's not going to be good enough, right? Because I also need to allow for a degree of error. So it has to be the type where even if we're wrong a little bit, we're still getting our hurdle rate. And I'll give you some of those examples as we go through. Thank you, Derek, Carwin. Thank you as well, Hiran, uh, David from Cardiff, Essex. We've got a lot of representation for a lot of places. All right, so I wanted to show this for a couple of reasons. One, it was one that we'd held, but the 12 months are coming up. Is it one that will continue holding? I don't think it's going to be able to stay in the portfolio because it's going to be elbowed out because after 12 months, we review and we go through the whole process, which I'll describe in a second. I don't think it's going to make the first team. 
You know, it's like a football team. If you're not in the first team, if you're not good enough, you don't quite make it. Right, markets over the past year. Will it be like this again this year? Well, they're bombing the hell out of each other in the Middle East, but the market doesn't seem to be too fussed about that. Uh, there's a lot of negativity, in other words, a lot of uncertainty in the world. Elections in the world. China in the world. Uh, and yet profits keep coming. So will it be another year like last year? Well, I'm going to touch upon that because initially I would have just said, no, don't be stupid. You can't keep getting these massive 55% returns in the NASDAQ or 25% in the S&P. Uh, but I'm going to look at the data. I don't want to try and guess politics, economics, and all the rest of it. Uh, I'm going to look at some of the data. I'm going to share that with you as we go ahead. This, because remember, I'm incorporating the weekly stock market update in all of this. This is the share price to forward earnings. Now, a friend of mine put it really well last night. He said, yeah, it's sort of like you get into stocks because you're trying to front run their profits. Yeah, so you're looking at the share price and you're saying, is it cheap compared to future profits? The ones in green, I'll keep it simple, the ones in green look relatively cheap. Banks, oil and gas, um, interestingly, telecom services. And again, I'm going to touch upon some of these in a second and what I own and what I don't. By the way, Verizon and AT&T pay really good dividends as well, but I don't care about that because 6% dividends, both pay over 6%, 6% dividends doesn't really do it for me if I get a 0% capital gain return. I can get 5% from a bank. So why would I want 6% from a stock, uh, which I then have to end up holding for ages if the stock tanks? So that in itself won't do it. What it has to be is not the dividends, but actual capital growth. I'm still relatively young, I think. So I want the capital growth. I'm not there just to hold things to try and get a basket of stocks, which will give me 6% uh, and destroy the portfolio value, right? So we will touch upon some of these here uh, that look relatively cheap on price to forward earnings. But guess what this also tells you? It tells you that valuation is not the only thing that drives market gain. If you only looked at valuation, then you'd sit out or you'd say, oh, there's going to be a crash. It's a bubble. It's a bubble. And you'd be getting poorer every day as the markets did this last year. Because none of these that have risen were undervalued on the conventional measure. So we can't just look at valuation, which is what I always tell people, because we're here to make money, not to make academic soundings about valuation and all the rest, of it, which is why people like Michael Burry keep getting it wrong, or Jeremy Grantham, or the guy from Rich Dad Poor Dad, who just keep whinging that the market's going to crash. And of course, you know, once every six years, they'll be right, just like a broken clock which is what they sound like. What we're going to look at also, I'll, I don't even need to show you that image. What I can show you even better than that in the weekly update, okay, is this. And why do we look at it? I'll explain in this video the stocks and the market update, but I'll incorporate within there that those stocks tended to tick if they were the value box, but if they were a little bit overvalued, their growth compensated for that. So it's not just value you look at, you do, but you give some concession to the fact, a bit like in a football team, yeah, he's not a great defender, but bloody hell, he can score really good goals. So value might be a little bit too high. But the growth is that you need to tick value, growth, and income. This is why fund managers fail. Because they say, oh, no, no, we're only going to pick value. We're only going to pick growth. And they don't realize you can have both. You've been lied to when people have said, oh, well, it can be a growth company. It can be value. It can't be both. They're idiots who write that. Actually, they are really, literally are financial idiots uh, or at least financial illiterates who write that. Okay. Those 18 books over my shoulder, I'm not illiterate when it comes to finance. And, and they make that classic mistake for the simple reason they just keep regurgitating what they were told by their grandparents in the 1960s. We'll also look at why cash return on capital investors is important. Momentum, Sortino, Alpha. None of these stocks make my cut, by the way, because all five boxes have to be green. So none of these stocks, none of these stocks are good enough for my first team. They can play for Plymouth Argyle, but they are not playing for, I don't know, what's the greatest team? out there. Leeds United. No, of course not. Man City. Uh, uh, they're not paying for them. All right. They're not going to make the first team. They're just not going to make the cut. I would say in cricket, they're not going to make this Australian front first team. And that's how brutal I am. And I have to be. Okay. So I'll share some of those with you. Now, what this is, how we've done over the past week, we as in the market, how the market's done over the past week. Now, I was worried at first that are we going to get a sell-off? It's not happening. 
we're not getting that sell-off. And you're going to see that in a second. There was a bit of a wobble at first. Retail money seems to be one of the reasons it's coming in. Profits is one of the reasons. NVIDIA, that's in the past week. Do you know how much it's up so far this year? NVIDIA. For every day the market has been open so far in 2024, NVIDIA has gone up 1%. I'll look at NVIDIA for you in a second. So that gives me a pretty good idea as a bellwether that the market is not getting ready to take a load of profits, which is what I was worried about. Alpish, how come you're worried uh, in, on January? You said this, I remember, Alpish. Uh, that means you were wrong. No, I'd rather be cautious. And yeah, I was worried and I've been proved wrong that actually, nope, looks like um, we're getting all in again. Okay. Uh, and it's, but let's look at the specifics. I'm very much bottom up. In other words, I don't care what the company does, what sector it's in, which country it's in, as long as it ticks my boxes for which read rings my bells. Okay. Value, growth, income, cash flow. When I set up the hedge fund, we had to raise capital. To raise capital, you've got to be really diligent. You've got to show everything. You cannot say, yeah, well, what I do is I scratch my bum in the morning and if I feel like I want to buy something, I buy it. That don't work. It's got to be data intensive uh, and something that they can rely on. And that's why I take this methodical approach. And before that, I was a barrister, so you can imagine, really do take a very uh, uh, evidential approach. Okay, so Let's get into some of the nitty gritty. By the way, exchange traded funds as well. That's the performance. I'm not going to talk about those so much here. I'll do separate videos on those on my YouTube and elsewhere about exchange traded funds only because uh, they're a separate topic in themselves. You can see so far this year, by the way, if you're interested, healthcare is doing well. I was asked yesterday whether commodities would have a good year. It doesn't look like it at the moment. It doesn't look like it at the moment. And I've done a um, I was going to say, I've done a video on three times leverage, which I don't normally do, but that's j just on the private client telegram. For those of you on the Great Investments Program, and Ravi, in case I know you like this stuff, uh, the three times leverage Microsoft, which is nuts. I never thought I'd ever say it, but um, we had somebody else do rather well out of it. So there we go. Markets today, yeah, pretty flat, not very interesting. Uh, top 10 S&P stocks over the past month. I show this out of interest, not that I own any of these. It's just purely out of interest for you. And similarly out of the UK, the, the 350 largest. So what? Okay. Not any that we own or if they don't make our list, they don't make our list because we don't buy on momentum alone. Momentum has a 10% weighting. Okay. 40% is valuation. That's the most important. And then revenue, growth, dividend deals, cash flow, make up for the rest. So what are the projections? Sorry, it looks a bit of a mess. My assistant, um, I don't know what's wrong with her. Uh, anyway, uh, the, the bottom line you need to see, and I'm going to zoom in on this, a couple of things that are interesting. That's my bullish case, 25% up on the S&P 500. That's my 12-month bullish case, okay? right? Doesn't mean it's the most likely and it doesn't mean it's guaranteed. It's not those, all right? Um, it's neither of those. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so uh, <laughs> thanks, KP. I appreciate it, my friend. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Eli, Lily, I'll have a look for you now that you've been really nice, KP. I don't know who KP is. Tell me your full name. Um, cause for all I know, you're a random stranger. Uh, I'll have a look at Eli Lily for you. It's not a problem. Um, uh, 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 oh, thank you. Um, and the signals are scarily accurate. I love that. Thank you, KP. Uh, I'll have a look at those, uh, as well. Uh, thank you, my friend. So I'll, I'll go through that. Now, that's the bull case. Now, where did I come up with that from? Well, actually, I'm just looking at, as you know, I look at the momentum, and I'm looking at this. And that's what I'm projecting on a bullish case. All right? Okay, 25% up again on the S&P. And you might say, are you bloody kidding me, Alpesh? What are you smoking? Well, it's done it before, so it's not as if it can't, and it's had a massive breather as well before, okay? Uh, and yes, we're at all-time highs. You can see why I want my pension in American stocks. Now, my first column in the Financial Times in 1999 said exactly that. I'm investing purely in U.S. stocks for that reason, okay? Uh, 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 yeah, no worries, KP. That's perfectly fine. No worries, no worries, no worries. Fully understand. Um uh, on that. And I will uh, do the Eli Lilly one. If I forget before the end, uh, let me know. But I will do that analysis uh, for you and everyone else and what I think about it right up to date. So the FTSE 100, eh, look, I've told you before, I'm just fed up with British management. I mean, they might as well all go and work for uh, a 
Fujitsu. Because seriously, that's where we are. We're at, what, 2018 levels. On And if I went further back, it's probably not. We're probably at 2012 levels with the FTSE 100. I mean, come on. And then I get, and I'll tell you what's heartbreaking. I get email after email from people saying to me, everybody from their 40s to their late 60s, my pension's gone nowhere in the last five years. And I say, send it over. And we look at what they own. And it's like, yeah, because it's, that's it. It's copying that. I'm really sorry, and I try and help them with this, and we'll see what we're going to do in a second. Okay, so with the NASDAQ, it's looking pretty good. I'll tell you what it looks like. I'm going to teach you a bit of education as well as information in these as well, because I think that's really important. I'm going to pull some things up on the website. I know normally I'd have all these things done, but it has been a bit of a mental day uh, today on uh, a variety of issues and things, um, all in a good way. Okay, now, that monthly MACD looks a little bit like that, doesn't it? Yeah, doesn't mean it's going to copy it by any means. All right, and look what happened. So look what happened. You get, you can still get pullbacks and people panic, and that's what's going to happen. People are going to panic. There's going to be some profit taking. And then this, this is why I do the broadcast twice a week, so you know people don't need to panic. That, in percentage terms, was a move from uh, under 1200 to 1600 which is about a call it a 30 percent rise can nasdaq go up 30 percent again i'm not saying it can because i'm scared to say that i'm scared to say that whether it can do that in 12 months can it do it in two years i feel a bit more comfortable saying that i feel a bit more comfortable saying that which is nuts if somebody said to me you can have your pension go up 30 percent in two years would i take it yeah I would, but I don't just do that and say, oh, okay, I'm off to bed now. It's going to go up oh, uh, 30% so I can just buy an index tracker and go to sleep. No, I want to keep an eye on it. So how are we going to monitor it? What might we individually pick within it as well? Because we also know the NASDAQ can do this, okay, which is why I do my twice weekly broadcast, right? Because we don't want to be in a situation where it goes down 30%. All right, and your pension loses 30% because that can happen. That can happen, All right? So that's why we do these. Now, where are we with Apple? That's flat. It can be a bit worrying because the weekly momentum seems to be downwards, and so does the stochastic, which tends to be overreactive, but not as important. This is the most important, and that's flat. Hopefully, this will hold. And I know, I know. I was looking at the goggles last night online, and what if they're a disaster? There's some other stuff, Apple News. Don't I'm not bothered about the news. I need to know what's happening uh, longer term, and I continue to hold it. Remember, there's only three things I can do. I can buy, hold, or sell. Well, I'm certainly not selling at the moment. Uh, I continue to hold what I've got, and thank you very much. It's going to mean a better retirement. As, as one of my customers on um, the Great Investments Program put it, Oh, I'll pass this pension's not for my children. Oh, no, no. This is for me and my wife to blow. The kids can get the house. That's it. I love that attitude. So I'm holding this. I, I'm holding this. And again, Apple over the past year, thank you very much. Uh, I didn't invent Apple. I didn't create it. All I did is I rode the coattails of a bunch of people in Cupertino, California. And I've actually been to their headquarters. Uh, not inside the ring, just in the guest's shop. I wasn't a VIP guest or anything. I parked in the car park outside, walked to their shop. They've got a shop outside the big, you know, the big ring they have. And they had the most nerdiest people, fellow Indians, nerdiest people you will ever meet in your entire life. God bless them, because they're the ones who live and dream this stuff and drink this stuff. Okay, and that's the kind of people you want working for you. And they basically, I'm a shareholder. They work for me. Uh, so thank you for what you did for my pension, Apple, last year. The point being, I continue holding. Would you, if you put a gun to my head, buy more? No, I'd wait till Friday's broadcast because that's flat and it could easily go a bit lower. Okay, so that's what I am with Apple. Return potential, say the analysts, 8% 8, 8 over the next year. And that's what they think on average. I, analysts are usually wrong. What about Alphabet? Well, Alphabet's sort of slowing down a bit. If you put a gun to my head again, would I buy more? I continue holding it. Uh, would I sell? No. Would I buy more? Yeah. Okay. If you put a gun to my head, I would. Microsoft, would I buy more? Yep. For the same reasons as with Alphabet, would I continue holding what I got? Well, obviously. Would I sell? No. Not yet. Uh, and I've put a projection in there for you. I've had a whole bunch of people sign up to the Great Investment Program saying, I followed your videos over the last year diligently. And one of them said, I'm up 45%. So I thought I'd join. 
So a lot of you, I know what you're doing. You, you're watching, you're monitoring, and then you're thinking, so I'm, getting, I'm not going to display so much now. So Amazon, you can go and join up for that one. Disney. Now, those are special situations. Still waiting. Okay, there we go. By the way, I've been watching Slow Horses on Apple Plus. Uh, Apple Plus is a keeper. I mean, some of them are winning. Yeah, Netflix is winning in terms of content. I like Disney. I've subscribed to them all. Not because... I get a lot of time to watch TV. It's just that it tends to be on in the background while I'm doing other stuff. Uh, uh, so that's where we are with that. Yeah, it's just a wait. It's just a wait as well. Don't forget on YouTube, you've also got a whole load of my videos on why your pension fund manager should be locked up because, quite frankly, they're destroying pensions. Uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA is important because I'm going to tell you what I call the NVIDIA strategy, but it's actually the same strategy for everything that I own. And the reason... I only own 15 to 20 odd stocks is, look, there is a, a principle uh, that diversification is an insurance policy against ignorance. But when you've got the data that I've shown you, then you're not ignorant anymore. And if you're not ignorant, then you don't want diversification when the market's rising, because that would imply you want some things falling which you don't want. You want concentration when the markets are rising. And when the markets are falling, you can't have diversification anyway, because there's correlation to the downside. If you don't believe me, just look at how often Costco, the retailer, falls alongside Microsoft. Or, in the modern interconnected world, a Chinese bat flaps its wings and we all get COVID. It's another way of putting it. And concentration is what the clever people who've got the data do. So this is Warren Buffett's portfolio. Yeah, look, 50% in Apple, 9% in Bank of America. Don't buy these just because he has. He might have got in a lot sooner than you, like Coca-Cola he bought in uh, 1806, something like that. Uh, Okay. The reason I'm showing this, take a photo if you wish. I'm going to pull it off the screen in a second. The reason I'm showing that is because actually you don't need as many stocks as you think. Because if you're getting the data to know you've ticked every single box, then you want concentration in a rising tide. But what happens if the market falls? Or what happens if like here, how do you protect yourself from a rise like this, which fund managers love to crow about? Oh, I picked NVIDIA. Look at me. I'm amazing market 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 um the fund and then when it goes down it's like oh god scottish mortgage is a classic example of that and fundsmith are a classic example of doing that okay so what they end up doing is taking you back two years you lose two years of your life and then when in the third year it goes back up you're still only where it was a year ago so you've still got a zero percent bloody return there anyway so they've wasted so much of your time and money whereas what I suggest in case, so how do you protect against this alpage? Well, you have, as we do with everything, the NVIDIA strategy, which is if it falls X percent, X, okay, X1, X2, right? You sell Y percent. Now, X can be 10%. If it drops 10%, you will sell, say, 50% if you're risk averse. If you're more risk loving, you'll say if it drops 20%, i.e. X2 is 20, you will sell maybe 50% then. Do you see what I mean? I don't think X should be less than, should be greater than 25. You don't want to wait if it drops all 25% to sell all of it. That's the outlier. That's the safety. So now you've got a safety valve, which allows you to get into cash. Fund managers can't do that. Okay. So that protects you. Simple. Now, is that worth five minutes of your time every two weeks to look at, pick up your phone, look at your portfolio? Okay. No, it's not dropped from the peak. Okay, fine. <coughs> Because you get to get your 250% return. Otherwise, what's going to happen if you decide, no, 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 I heard you've got to buy and hold forever, and I've trusted all my money to those expensive Muppets at the fund management company. Well, then you're going to get this, and you're going to lose two years of your life. But you know what will happen? When it's rising like this, that's when you're going to be booking the expensive holidays and buying the, the new car. And when it's dropping, you're going, oh, shit, I wish I hadn't done that. As my grandmother used to say, unless the money's in your bank account, in cash, you do not count it. All right. So that's the NVIDIA strategy. Like I said, I'm going to give you education as well as the information on what's on the market. Now, as you know, I got out of Tesla in October only because I it was a special situation on the great investments program. We'd had a good run. Um, now, where is it at the moment? Well, I wouldn't get in today. Simple as that, because it's still looking like there's a bit of downward momentum. So wait till Friday's broadcast. Uh, it's, it, it, it's not on the approved filtered list, so it can only be a special situation, which means it's n which means I'll broadcast it as and when if and as and when that happens okay uh, what about uh, meta meta okay now again classic example i'm going to give you the information of where we are now but i'm also going to give you the education of how to do this yourself right now 
that dropped. Now, if you follow me on my Telegram channel, if you're in the Great Investments Program, you know we said to get out of that very early January 2023. Sorry, 2022. So we missed that. Do we know it was going to drop that much? No. If you said to me it's going to drop 80%, I would have said, don't be stupid. Company as big as Meta, drop 80%. And then if you said then the next year it'll go up 250%, I would have said, what drugs are you? Put down the caffeinated drinks, will you? That's what I would have said, but it's done it. So how do we protect against being whipsawed out there and then regretting it? Simple. The NVIDIA strategy, which is if it drops X, you sell Y. That's it. Okay, so never got out of that. If you follow my broadcast, you'll know. And actually, the other way is that was just rising too much. So you'll know if you follow these broadcasts. When it fell, I said, no, should pull back soon. Should be all right, even though the weekly is falling. Now, I'm saying that my worry here, and it'll happen at some point, is it starts doing this, which it did here. All right? So what do we do, Pat Alpish? When do we panic? Simple, NVIDIA strategy. If it drops X, you'll sell Y. And Y will depend upon your risk aversion. If you're very risk averse, you'll sell a lot more on a small drop. And if you're more risk loving, you'll sell a lot more only on a big drop. Simple as that. The only thing you can control is not the future. You can neither see it nor control it, is what you will do, okay, based on your risk appetite. And your risk appetite is different to mine. People go, can't we just copy you? No, because I've got three private jets in the back garden of you. Obviously not. Neither have I, by the way. Um, so copying me doesn't make sense. I might be willing to take crazy amounts of risk because I think, oh, well, we're meta. I'm just going to use it as play money. And then you're left there going, oh, shit, you lost that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't mind. It was just play money, monopoly money. And you might be going, well, it wasn't for me, mate. That's why you develop it to your own risk appetite, not mine. And equally, if ever we go for dinner, don't order what I order on the menu, Okay. We've got different appetites. Same goes for risk. I'll come back into the uh, questions. Uh, uh, we many jets. I don't have any jets. I want many jets. Uh, hey, I just love your webinars with the same passion since I joined. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love this stuff. I've loved it since I was little. I don't know why. Obviously, something wrong for a 12-year-old to be this much into uh, the markets. Okay. Service now, I'm only going to do for clients. I've had some clients say, hey, listen, you're giving too much away on the free stuff. Um, special situation from last year was Intel. That does not mean we're still in it because 12 months are up as of 17th. And so you've got to look. Okay, if you got in then, you've got to look and say 12 months are up, made my 54% gain. You guys know the formula. You know, where is it? You know um, the rules. What should I do, Alpesh? Uh, how we do this. Okay, you can see all this, can't you? Go on the live broadcast. Yeah, you can see all that. Uh, you know the rules. It's either 12 months or it's fallen X percentage from the peak based on your risk appetite. Okay. And unless it's in the approved filtered list again or a special situation, I honestly can't remember if it is for the January. Um, I can't remember if for the January filtered stocks it is in there. And I don't think it is. Ravi, you'll know. Mithun, you'll know because you're on the program. Actually, don't write if it is. I don't want to necessarily share it. Uh, then we'll decide to do that. Now, Netflix, I don't own, as you know, but it's a bellwether. Okay, so where are we on Netflix? Okay, that's the look on Netflix, and well, still projecting that. Uh, that's where we did the projection. And um, yeah, nothing to do. Look, most weeks you come into this, there's nothing actually to do. It's And, that, and that's right, because it's a 12-month hold, and there shouldn't be. Uh, is your pension delivering that? Right? Please remember... I've done a whole bunch even yesterday. I'm picking various funds because there's so many people emailing me with their various funds that they own in their pensions and workplace pensions. And what I'm doing is I'm analyzing those pensions, what they own, and giving a rating. And Scottish Investment Trust, one out of five. I've had a million views on the 1st of January, not on that day, accumulated it so happened that the millionth view came on the 1st of January, just so we're clear on that. So have a look at my YouTube on that. Now, I'm also going to show you in these weekly updates uh, things which might be popular elsewhere and are bellwethers and other people are talking about, but are not. it's not for me. Just because it's in the news and you might say, well, what about General Electric? I heard about it. It's a really big company, as indeed somebody asked me. Okay. Now, it's not for me because I just think that's just too overbought. Now, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I think it's going to probably do this. Okay, so I think on this, all of these banks are wrong. Alpesh versus Deutsche Bank, Morgan Stanley, Citigroup, Barclays, JP Morgan. Who do you think is going to win? I know what you're going to say. Yeah, it, it will be me uh, on that because it's happened time and time again. Just how it is. Uh, again, one not for me. 
but it's come up not so well known, but quite a few hedge funds had it. So I, it came across my screen and I looked at it. It's not one for me because I can't buy everything. However, see, oversold, it could well do this. It's not, do your own research on this one because I've not done more research than this. All I'm saying is, were it to project forward, and it's not one I'm going to buy, it's not one that I've bought. Okay, then that's what I guess the hedge funds who are in it, that's what they're projecting and that's why they're in it. Caveat mTOR, buyer beware. It's I've not done more research than what I'm showing you here, but the reason I'm showing it is because it came up on the radar because I don't want to just show what I have got. I thought I'd sort of broaden it out a bit more as well. Don't forget, on my LinkedIn, I have summarized the top 10 points of every single major bank's economic outlook. Okay, so Goldman Sachs, top 10 points from there. So you don't have to read the PDFs. They're there. You don't have to read them. You can get the updates, and they're on LinkedIn. And now, like Bill Gates, same bank balance. No, I wish. Uh, uh, I'm a top voice on LinkedIn. They like it so much uh, as well. So do get it from there. And thank you all who've been doing the the, um, the client reviews. And if you'd like to do one, alpishpatel.com forward slash links, you can leave one there if you'd like to do one. So what are the problems that people are facing? Oh, I tell you what, let me pull up Eli Lilly as well. Give me one second. I'm going to pull up Eli. So what are the problems? So I've had hundreds of emails come through. And uh, let me tell you, ooh, Eli, oh, my God, yeah, okay. You're going to want my view on this. Wait a second. You're going to want my view on Eli Lilly. Uh these are the main problems that came up. Now, some of them are repeated. That's why it doesn't add up to 100. Pensions low return over one to five years is one of the most popular. IFA or wealth manager, clueless or useless or words to that effect. I don't know how to sack my IFA. <laughs> British people, I've said it before, so polite. Even if they're losing money and their retirement and a rich IFA is taking fees and causing them a loss, the, the poor British pensioner will say, excuse me for, um, you know, uh, uh, being in your way of your losses. I, I apologize. Here's some more money. Please take it. They won't sack them. It's amazing. Uh, and then there's, I've never done it myself. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I answer that one. Also, my FA does spray and pray comes up a lot because I use those words. So people repeat those words with dozens of funds. So let's look at some of that. Okay. Problem, your RFA does spray and pray. Uh, no strategy, underperformance, dozens of funds. And you can see my videos on all those funds and why they underperform. They pick from a narrow gene pool. I'll give you an example. Somebody asked me to do China, a few China funds. China is down over the last five years, 38%. I know what you're going to say. Surely it's time for it to recover now, Alpesh. Yeah, I don't know. But it's down 38%. Great. And you know what happened five years ago? Everybody said, oh, yeah, go have a bit of China. Yeah. And the IFA said, yeah, you got to have a bit of China. Thank you very much. Ka-ching. There's more commission for the IFA. All right. People hold on too long and not knowing when to let go. Obviously, major problem. They've got stocks which have gone up, and then they've crashed down, and they've held on too long. IFA giving 0% return when the NASDAQ was up 55%. That's you talking to your IFA. And the IFA is going, oh, well, we, we, we'll just keep paying the fees and shut up, will you? Okay. Uh, and then too scared to sack the IFA, as everybody in the office. You know, he's got lots of certificates, you know, he got from the back of magazines, uh, which, uh, but, you know, everyone's like, oh, God, how do we sack him? It's just easier to keep paying him, isn't it? I should say AI is, has overdone the ethnic diversity um, to the extent that it's, it's, it's undiverse, uh, if you see what I mean. Because uh, if you look at that... Uh, <laughs> I think statistically, Britain, that might not be actually as accurate uh, as as ChatGPT thinks. You're wasting a lot of time, energy, and confusion. That's a lot of people as well. They've been overdoing it on the research, which is why, like I said, look, I many years ago, I realized my life, um, actually, my life used to be like this, by the way. Uh, it, it really did. Um, and then I thought, I, I can't spend the rest of my life not seeing daylight. I'm for a start, I'm browned. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn white at this rate. Uh, which I mean, no offense, it's a nice color, but you know, I quite like being tanned up. So I thought I need more sun, I need to get out. And that's why it was created like this to simplify, simplify, simplify. Uh, and then uh meant that I got more daylight and top up the tan. Uh and if you put all my team in one place, then it really would look this awful. All right. So 
is 40% realistic? Before I get into that, let's just look at Eli Lilly, all right? Let's look at Eli Lilly, which is what we might want to do on the update. So that's Eli Lilly. Now, guess what? It's been going along in this channel. It's had a standard rate of growth as Eli Lilly, okay? And you can see it in the channel. Nice little growth, year on year, you know. When we first picked it back in 2021, it did indeed do what I forecast, which, you know, things rarely go exactly like that. Sometimes they go up like that and then come back down and hit your target. Sometimes they go down and like this. It's like telling my son, who's five, go over there, son, and he'll go there first, there first, there first, then he'll eventually get there. All right? It's very rare. So stock prices are a bit like a five-year-old child. They have a mind of their own. But it did that. And in one year, seven months, 71%. Fine. Great. Lovely. Now what's happened is it's gone way above the kind of rate of growth it naturally gets, which is more clearly exemplified here in the momentum. And that's looking toppy. And I'm, I'd am i be more concerned about a pullback on this. So again, I do the NVIDIA strategy. I don't need to get out of it today. I don't need to pound just say, if it drops X, I'll sell Y. And well, the worst case scenario is, well, I say worse. Um, yeah, that would be pretty worse, wouldn't it? Worst case scenario, I don't think that's going to happen, do you? No. All right. It's probably more likely to maybe do closer to that. So you might say, well, you know what? If it drops 10%, I'll get rid of it all. Or if it drops 15%, i will sell half. If it drops 10%, i will sell half, et cetera. You can work that out on your own risk appetite. Um, I'm just a bit worried about this. Now, if it just continues soaring, those triggers will never get hit. Nothing to worry about. Carry on. All very good. Do you see the approach we use, part and parcel of getting that? hurdle rate of 30 to 40 percent is 40 percent realistic now i said there's 10 preconditions you need to try and get a 40 percent rise on your pension 10 that's why it's not easy and not everyone's doing it one you need a market tailwind out of my hands out of my hands 2021 we had it 2023 we had it 2024 inshallah as they say god willing okay it'll happen if um, there's high Sortino socks. That means stocks with a high average performance historically and consistency in getting that. In other words, they tend to be consistent in their high achievements and their high alpha stocks. In other words, when the market moves up, they move up more than the market. And when the market drops, they don't drop more than the market. They are skewed to one side. They're alpha stocks. What do I look for in Sortino and alpha? Okay. Sortino Alpha, they've got to be green. Guess what? Look at it. Have a little scroll. Look at how few meet that criteria. Look at how few, but that's not the only thing they need to be. There's a they need to do all of these first five columns. Okay, so you can see if you want to get into my university, you want to get into my football team, you're gonna to have to be really good. Okay, there's no buys for hmm, might have potential. Yeah, let's roll the dice on that one with my pension. No. All right. It's probably not going to be the UK. Well, because it never has been, I'm afraid, okay, for a while. Uh, it's probably not going to be emerging markets. If you want to know why, just have a look at my videos on YouTube on emerging market funds. Uh, it's probably going to be the US and a select number of those. For a start, there's more stocks to filter down from. It's just a numbers game. It's not because America, they're global companies. They could be anywhere in the world. It's just that there's a lot of them, okay? If you can go into cash, if there's a bad year, then yeah, all right, then you get your 50 because you've got the ability to keep the money that you made. If you can't keep the money you made, you're not going to get a 40% per hour average return. If you monitor once a fortnight, because if you don't, then you're going to get some with a big gain. Ravi, you had this with Crocs and Generac, do you remember? And you managed to keep the gain because you monitored it. Because if you didn't, you would have ended up get a Crocs going up 250% and then going back down to zero. And you would have said, oh, no, I missed it. I've got nothing to show for it, even though it went up 250%. So I say five minutes every two weeks minimum, please monitor. All right. If good years make up for bad, like last year made up for 2022, 2021 probably made up for the previous five years. It was an amazing year. It wasn't me. It was the market. Um, I am uh, somebody who rides the coattails of what the companies do. I didn't invent these companies, I just ride the coattails of their hard work, which is why good old fashioned working class people hate people like me, because it's not an honest day's work. And they often will tell people like me.
even though I was born in Armley. Croaky stocks. Now, I'm going to show you the charts on that, and that is critically important. If they are not high cash return on capital invested, high cash return on capital invested stocks, the chances of you then getting that return are very, very slim. And Goldman Sachs Wealth Management for their richest clients pick stocks this way, and I'll show you the slide, uh, because they know over the long term it generates 30% per annum. Okay, and if they don't have high cash return capital invested, you are relying more and more on luck and speculation. You're probably picking a mining company which is going exploring for oil in the South China Seas and hoping they catch, they get the oil break. That's fine if that's what you want to do. Mix it with some investments at a casino in Vegas on black and red as well while you're at it. Okay, now if you hold for 12 months, then reevaluate. Less than that, and you're not giving it enough time. More than that, and you've given it too much time, and it's it's a new set of results and accounts and all the rest of it are out. Um, sell anything. So you've got a way of exiting once there's a big gain like NVIDIA, so you get to pocket some of that money. Uh, and like I said, if you can do this with 18% in the UK, then the US tends to do more than double. That's how it works, all right? Now, this is really important. This is really important. This is typical, legal and general. My employer shoved me into it. Uh, I've only had 20% growth between 2012 and 2022. It's up to you, but you're being screwed. And the main reasons are the funds can only invest in a narrow group of stocks based on geography, and they put 50 to 100 companies in there. So they're spraying and praying. You saw how the billionaires concentrate their wealth and then monitor it. Funds don't do that. Hey. Do you know some other things funds don't do? Allow you to talk to the fund manager because they're too precious. And you know what they do when the market falls? Keep charging you money. It's a great gig if you can get it. It's, it's a bigger scam as the post office scandal. I mean, no offense to the people who were imprisoned in the post office scandal. With the fund management industry, the fund managers should be imprisoned. I showed an example of one who's been in the markets for 26 years and over the last five years has managed to lose 37%. And I think he worked for one of the big fund management houses. 26 years in the job. Still gets paid. He'll be retiring. You won't. So I gave this example to this person. And um, I've forgotten who it was who sent that. But anyway, she sent it. I think it was a woman. Sent it on December the 19th. And I said, well, look, even if you just tracked an index, forget doing anything I've said. Over that same period, you should have had a 482000 pounds the hundred thousand should have become four hundred eighty two thousand because you just tracked an index let's say you didn't do that you just tracked the s p 500 then at least the hundred thousand should be two hundred sixty six thousand in your bank account and if you tracked even the uk which you shouldn't then you'd have had twenty four thousand pounds extra you know if you're hundred thousand alfie i've got more questions uh are there any active fund managers that you like no no if you find one let me know and i'll evaluate them and i'll rip them a new one they can't. They can't be good for the simple reason they have to pick from a very narrow group of stocks. Now, you might say, yeah, but you know what? Scottish Mortgage and Fundsmith did really well. Yeah, when the markets were rising, in a rising tide, all boats rise. What happened when the tide went out? They were swimming without trunks, as Warren Buffett said. They were proved to be as crap as everybody else because they can't go into cash. Their hands are handcuffed. It's not that fund managers are congenitally idiotic. It's that they're, hand, they're handcuffed, but they won't tell you because they're earning too much money. And don't get me wrong. If somebody gave me $100 billion to manage, I too would be as corrupt as they are. Not holier than thou. I'm telling you now. Put $100 billion in my account. Test me. I'll be just as corrupt as they are, and I'll say exactly the same. Oh, no, 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 don't worry. We'll, we'll be fine. So when the market dropped in Scottish mortgage in 2022, and the market dropped 20%, lost 50% of your pension, everybody went quiet about how wonderful it is. Because they can't go into cash. They're not allowed. They have to be in equities. Okay? That's it. That's Look, that's not me saying, hey, follow what I'm doing. Look at me. Look at Do what I do. No, that's just an index tracker. And she didn't get, even get that. This is why I do this thing even more so now because I've seen what people say. My job, I look at 10,000 stocks. I put it into that spreadsheet, okay? Value has to be ticked. Growth has to be ticked. Income has to be ticked. You speak to a fund manager and they say, oh, we're value only. Well, they're bloody idiots then, aren't they? What about growth and income then? Or they say, oh, we're only growth. Or we're only British. What, are they racist? Oh, we only pick British companies. That's our job. Mm, right. Okay. So you're not going to pick the best companies from around the world for my pension. Nah, mate. Nah, nah, nah. Why would we do that? We only want British ones. 
just racist stock picking, basically. A bit idiotic, right? It's stupid. It's your fund. Look, it's your pension. I don't care about your pension as much as you care about your pension. You care about your pension. Look at how few companies are eligible anyway. And then they go and narrow it down. They go and narrow it down to just some from a certain country. And they've got so much money to manage that they can only pick a few of those companies anyway because they've narrowed the pool down to very few companies which are British. And then they're saying, well, we've got a billion to deploy. Oh, guess what? It's going to have to be Shell and BP again. Oh, God, that's original. Let's hope they over overperform. Guess what? No, they won't. So they screwed. It's not their fault in a way. I mean, they're just human. They're corruptible. Yeah, look, they went to a good university. They got a degree. They got a mortgage, student loan to pay. They got a good financial job, pays them money. If they have to lie to you a bit or at least not tell you the truth about why they're going to underperform, yeah, they got debts to pay. Got to feel sorry for them, don't you? All right. Uh, so how did we do? I've talked a lot. Last year, right, I've got to do disclaimers because I can't go straight into this. The market was up 25%, all right? That isn't me. I can't take credit for that. So how we did last year is not down to me. The following is US. I, I do select and show uh, London Stock Exchange European stocks you can have in your SIP and ISA. I don't buy them. I buy only US, okay? So I'm only going to show you the US ones. Uh, our further filtered final list. These are taken from the further filtered final list, MACD Rising and the Quality 5, that as you will know that I have, and special situations uh, uh, within from January to December, okay? So I'm not including other things we might have bought during the year, and that might have added to performance, Okay, doesn't include those because it's January to December I'm only looking at. Does not include overweight holdings or any leverage, which would also have enhanced and skewed the results for us to make it look even better, right? This was not a typical year. Will it happen again? I don't know. Was not a typical year. Much of 22, 2022 was in cash. All right, so don't think last year was typical. Because if last year happened every year, I'd be the richest man in the year and um, uh, in, richest man in the world in a couple of years. Well, not couple, but you know, does not mean any will be held into 2024. So, you know, because of our 12 month rule. So, how do we do? And there's the grand reveal. I like this grand reveal. Somebody in my team worked out that you can do it like this. Da -da. Can you believe that? Look at that. Okay. Now, somebody had said, yeah, well, uh, this is on TikTok. They said, yeah, well, if you didn't have the ones which did really well, you wouldn't have done well. TikTok, honestly. I mean, you know, listen, you don't have to worry about global warming. The idiots are going to destroy the earth or AI. It's either going to be supercomputers, which are overly intelligent, or the people who are really stupid. It's, it's not going to be the people in the middle. Okay, so that's what happened. That happened. Now, yeah, that happened. What can I say? That happened. Uh, Sterling, I didn't even know what the hell Sterling Infrastructure did. It's bottom up. That was a special situation. Okay. Uh, MedPace, still don't know what they do. To reemphasize the point, this is numbers. It is not about, oh, did you go speak to the management? No. Like Warren Buffett says, what are they going to tell me? That how wonderful they are. Yeah. Uh, so the return was at 80%. That is not typical. That is not typical. All right might never happen again. Uh, this is how you sack your IFA. Uh, 11 years, I'll be 67 years old, and this will be when I'm expected to retire. On average, the performance of all your funds, if continued, will mean I undershoot my desired retirement with a reasonable amount. With the NASDAQ up 55%, Parrish wrote this, uh, and S&P up 25% last year. I'd like to know how you expect me to be happy with 5%. My fund has grown this year with BW. BW was um, the wealth management company that this individual uh, approached us and said, look, how do I sack them? I need to take my retirement seriously. I can only thank you for your efforts to date, but feel I now need to take things into my own hands, uh, take complete ownership of my wealth. I was speaking to my account about setting up a SIP or ISA. By the way, it's really simple how to do this. People don't know how to move it. I'm, I'm using Barclays, not because I'm affiliated or paid by Barclays or anything like that, but because it's a brand we all know and trust. You could use Hargreaves, AJ Bell, Halifax, Lloyd's. They all offer SIPs. And it's really simple. And it's a self-invested personal pension, so it's it's tax-free wrapper. Okay, it's like a bank account. That's how you do it. You open it, put your details in, you wire money like a bank account, all right? Tick a few boxes, and the account is open. And then you say, I want to buy some stocks. Equally, you can start with a bank payment or you transfer your old pensions. This is the bit people don't realize. All you do, transferring pensions from another provider, including old workplace pensions, can help you take control of your I didn't write that. That's from either Barclays or Hargreaves Lansdowne website. 
okay, I didn't write that. I'm just showing you how easy it is. And you just click and you write in. This is what I've got. I've got a crappy workplace uh, uh, pension. Can you move it? And they'll, you fill it in, provide the details, and they write to them and say, Oi, sling your hook. We want to move all the money over to this. That, they do it for you. You don't even have to sack them. They just do it for you. All right. And it's the law. Uh, transfer your existing pension in three easy steps. So this is from somewhere else. Uh, this is from Free Trade. Okay. I'm not affiliated to my anything. I'm just showing you how easy it is because people kept asking me, oh, I'm afraid to do it because I don't know what to do, which is fair enough, actually. Uh, open a pension, complete the short transfer form. That is it. I just took a screen grab. I thought, I can't explain it better than they do. They probably spent thousands on this website to explain it. Uh, and then those are some of the commissions. Now, be careful with this. Okay. Free trade are very naughty, very naughty. That is not actually the fee because that is capped to 200 pounds a year. Okay. But they don't tell you that there. Very, very misleading, incredibly misleading, naughty free trade. Okay. So any of these, if you opened, I wouldn't have an issue. And that's got a cap as well. So that looks expensive, not that bad. I don't care if you open any of those. Got loads of questions, got loads of questions. Um, no worry. Jim is calling. God bless you, Carl. Jim's been calling me and I just ignored Jim. Um, okay. And similarly, when do you buy? Well, simple. You say ABC company. I want to buy 500 pounds worth. Place a deal. That's from within your SIP. And it's all within that SIP you just opened where you transferred money. And it appears magically there. And there you go. And there you got your shares. That is it. Now, a lot of you all know this, but that is it. By the way, another one. Now, this was interesting. As you'll know, during the year last year, I started um, doing AI picks. Um, and I'm going to give you one now, which came up earlier this year. Don't, don't go and buy this. Okay. So we put into AI all this data. Okay. We put it all in. Uh, and uh, this came up. Let me see which one should I give you, which looks okay. Uh, dun, 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 dun. <sighs> okay, I'm going to give you this one. Uh, it looks all right. It's it's not one that I own. It's one that came up on AI, and we'll see how it does. It's not a tech company, uh, uh, but it came up, uh, and it doesn't look too bad. Costamare. Costamare. I don't know what they do. Does anybody know what Costamare does? So it came up. I haven't bought it. I'm not endorsing it. I'm just saying it came up when we put everything into uh, we put everything into Chat GPT. All right, that's all I'm saying. It came up uh, through that, right? So I'm just saying. Anyway, last year Broadcom was one of the uh, best AI picks. There's a whole bunch. We're we're putting them out there, uh, and this has not even been 12 months. That was AI. That wasn't me which is pretty good. Oh, there you go. There's That's the Telegram channel when I wrote it on May the 2nd. Uh, and then you can see December 2023, what happened. All right. This is Scottish Mortgage. Now, I've done this with a whole load of other pension companies that people have got their pension with, right? And this is what I'm talking about. They do really well while the tide is rising, because all boats rise in a rising tide. Then the market drops, and they have gone from... 1600 to 800 all right they've lost 50 percent of your pension and here's the boom and there it is okay they've lost 50 percent people invest on name recognition i've written about this in my financial times columns as well that's how people invest time and time again um all the questions i'm going to keep um i'll answer at the end i'll answer at the end because i've got to focus this um alfie i will have i'll put it on the great investments program private telegram channel the ai ones uh as we progress so what's my due diligence uh list as you've seen I want to look at valuation, has to be ticked. Whatever you do, whichever way you do it, please make sure you're ticking all of these boxes and not just one of them, all right? Uh, that has a 40% weighting. That's the most important, then that has 20. Why? Well, because the academic, I re rely on three economists. I've written about them in my books. They all, three economists, Richard Thaler, Daniel Kahneman, Eugene Famer, all three of them, I first wrote about in 1999, then 2000, 2001, 2002, and then in various books. Uh, they all subsequently went on to win the Nobel Prize in economics. All right? That's where I get all this from and why I take the approach I take. Uh, and there's a bit of Goldman Sachs in there, and that's what it should look like. Okay? I don't care about these numbers. I've just put them in so much. Volatility, I want to be overall for the portfolio under 20%. Uh, there's a load of reasons for that. So that, monitor infrequently, five minutes every two weeks, please. 12-month uh, holding, 
15 to 40 stocks, closer to 15, after that becomes a administrative burden and you don't mitigate any extra risk. Uh, and the NVIDIA rule, if it drops X percent, say 25%, you'll sell 100% of it. Okay. Uh, and that's that's the thing. Now, that's your sweet spot for the number of stocks to hold. Beyond that, you're just wasting time and you're spraying and praying. And I hold them in equal weight, except some get really top heavy, like the five quality companies I've already told you about before. Okay. So let's say you did this for 10 years and let's say you just made 20%. All right. Uh, so forget the fact that there's 55% on the NASDAQ. Let's say you underperformed even on those years. Um, or let's say, you know, some years you did zero, some years you did 40, so you averaged at 20, right? Let's say you got 100K and you plan to add that much each month because you've got a tax-free wrapper. So why not use the tax avoidance scheme of ISAs and SIPs? Uh, you'll have a million. That's your job. Convert 100,000 into a million over 10 years. So if you're 45 and thinking, oh, crap, I've only got 100K in my pension, how can I retire? Your goal would be to get a million by the time you're 55, which might not be enough anyway for the lifestyle you want. So I'm not saying it's necessarily enough, that you'll know better about that, but that's the goal, right? And that's why the rate of return is so important. Of course, you'll keep adding to it. That's nice and important as well. But you want to be in a situation where the income, people go dividend yields, screw dividend yields. I want bloody growth. I want, you know, what's that? 200,000 a year just from the investment. Or as somebody put it, I need an FU pension. And I've got a conspiracy theory that came up today. You know, employer pensions are the employer puts in money as if, you know, they're doing you a favor and that money's free. Well, they're only putting in part of your salary you would have got anyway into your pension. Well, I've got an employer contribution. Well, where the hell else do you think they were going to put it? There's either any salary or in there. The reason they put it in your pension is because you foolishly think it's free money. It's not. It's your salary that they're putting in, all right? But here's the interesting thing. I think employers want you to have a crap pension with a crap provider. And here's the reason. Imagine you got a 50% rise in your pension last year because you happen to just even track the NASDAQ. You got a 50% rise in your pension. What's going to happen to their workforce? All of a sudden, their workforce... All of them, let's say, had a 50% uplift in their pension in one year. There's going to be a lot of people leaving, isn't there? Ah, as an employer, I don't want that. I look, I'll be honest with you. As an employer, I would not want you getting a 50% return in your pension, especially if you're really good. Uh, I need to keep you on. Yeah, it's Karl Marx and you know evil employers and poor downtrodden employees. I'm sure they don't admit it. I'm sure they don't even think it. Maybe I'm being too conspiratorial, but it bloody doesn't half work out well for them, doesn't it? That your pension doesn't rise much. Just saying, I don't know. I, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist about it, but it, it does work out nicely that they've got you by the short and bloody curlies. And I look, if I've got good people, I'd want them staying with me. Okay. Um, so there we go. That's me. I've written about all this stuff, everything that I've mentioned to you, all the approaches, it's grounded in academic research and it's all in there. But it's more than that. It's, it's research from the investment banks. I'm going to come to that in a second. Uh, and I'm going to answer your Q&A in a second as well. Muppets like this, I, look, I keep mentioning him because uh, it just riles me up every talk. So the, the Financial Times said, you talk a good game, Alpesh. Are you any good? So they did a competition over a 12-month period to forecast the markets and I won. I came within 0.5% of the final value. All right. Uh, Neil Woodford was rubbish. You know what we do in this country, don't you? Yeah, we've got the post office crisis and all the rest of it. You know what we do, don't you? When, when people are robbing you blind, you give them more money, right? So for Jitsu, you keep giving them new contracts, right? That's the rule in Britain, right? If you're crap and you're fraudulent and you're rubbish and you're incompetent, you're going to get even more. If you're good, piss off, go to America or something, right? So Neil Woodford was then given 9.2 billion pounds. That's one way you knew it was crap because it's the way we do it. It's the rules. It's the law. So we did it. And then, of course, he did indeed. I could have told you in 2004 it was crap because I knew it then. I had proof. Jasper the bloody cat did as well as he did. Yeah, he's got the cat's whiskers now. He's an idiot. He's a profound idiot. Anyway, what can I do? Uh. On a tie break, I might look at what are in the billionaire portfolios, but it's more of a tie break uh, and the fact that it's concentrated in there. I do happen to own Apple and Microsoft, as you know, but I don't have any more of any of these. Um, 
That's what Goldman's got. So if you're into uh, uh, exchange traded funds, the iShares Russell 2000 is the more smaller cap end of the market, which is slated to do fairly well uh, this year. Now, this is probably one of the most life changing slides I ever came across at a lunch with Goldman Sachs Wealth Management, Jim O'Neill. And Crokey, cash return on capital invested. I need that to be in the top quartile. Why? Because that gives a 30% return for stocks. Stocks in the top quartile by Crokey, according to Goldman Sachs, uh, their wealth management division, and this is how they pick stocks for their richest clients. Okay, total capital, post cap, that's it. That is going to get 30% per annum. Not guaranteed, because look, there are years when it won't. And there'll be other years where it exceeds it, like last year. Last year, it'll do your 80%, and that'll make up for the year before. So you average 30-ish percent, okay? If you want to know, oh, it's so unfair. Rich people keep getting richer. Oh, the system's skewed. Yeah, well, because Goldman Sachs get research like this through their quantum division and all their geeks. Okay, I stole it, and I used it, but I, 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 that's just pure theft. I can sort of see why people do steal from the rich in the end, because it's like an unfair educational advantage that they have. And now I use that as a prerequisite to any of my stock picks, uh, unless it's what I call a special situation, which is it's narrowly missed some of these metrics, but still looks very strong otherwise. And that's why I call it a special situation. And a special situation I always mark as high risk. Remember what I said about this, please. That's the only bit you need to remember. Okay. And cash. Now, I always say in my webinars, where are we on this? Okay, where are we? Well, at the moment now, 2021, I was here. Sorry, 2022, I was here. 2022, when the markets were falling, I was there, as you all know. Uh, at the moment, I'm about here. Maybe a few special situations, 30%, 25%, uh, but the vast majority is here. Okay, uh, I'm going to go into... Now, this is a typical portfolio somebody sent. And it's terrible. Too many funds, too many funds doing too poorly. Look at that. That is somebody's real life portfolio they sent me to analyze. I wanted to cry for this person. I was thinking, do you honestly know how screwed your life is? Because you're with an IFA who's done this to you? They've done this to you? Are they going to get away with it? Look what they've got. Look at how much they've got and what they've got. Oh, and they've got funds worth. Yeah, well done. Okay. They've got all the name recognition crap. Because do you know why? Great marketing material. Because they had a few up years when the market was rising anyway. And so the market material was, whoa, 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 whoa. It's Mr. John Smith, you should buy into this fund because it's had a few good years. Look at these shiny brochures. Right? This is the reality of British old age pensioners, I'm afraid. I'm really sorry to say. They're going to miss out massively. This is another portfolio people fill it in they send it in this person's got four hundred half a million 63 so retirement those are the funds and they're generating this nothing now obviously a 63 year old should not be in just nasdaq or uh, uh, because single equities but they might have 40 percent in single stock equities and the rest in fixed income etc so they've got some buffeting this is like yeah sorry mate because um, when I looked into these, the returns just weren't there. And you might think, oh, surely the international equities North American did well. He's got 33% in there. No, it actually didn't. Okay, 1,000 companies. This is typical. This is Bruin Dolphin somebody's with. Situations that spread over 1,000 different companies, scattergun. So they can pull some out and say, oh, well, this one did well, Alpesh, but that one did really rubbish, I know, but, you know, leave it another few more years. My kid leaves school, um, uh, leaves private school in five years, so just keep your money there with, with us, will you? Okay, here's another. This guy got 4.2 million, but not enough, not enough stocks that are ticking all five boxes. And of the others, basically, they've got too many stocks to begin with. And secondly... Uh, uh, they haven't got enough which are ticking all the boxes, okay? And that's typical of what happens. Whoops, 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 let's go back. Okay, so there we are. I'm going to tell you more about the program. I think we can, there's a trillion-dollar industry, and I think we can have a billion-dollar company, especially with some venture capital investing, uh, to make this global. Now, we've got clients from San Francisco and Bermuda all the way to New Zealand. Oh, I'm going to come across some of those. I've been asked Verizon, Costco, Microsoft. Microsoft I've done already. Uh, okay, that's the approach I've already told you. I can train anyone up to be a professional fund manager. She was my secretary for two years after she left university. After those two years, she joined Newton Investment Management. 
I can train up English graduates uh, to go from being my secretary to being an investment manager. I mean, it took two years. Well, I needed it for two years. Uh, okay. And then I get asked by people, oh, pensioner, 30, 40 something, uh, annoyed with underperforming fund managers, all the rest of it. And that's why we created the program for those who want to join. But if you don't do it yourself, that's perfectly fine. Okay. But please do it the approach that I've said. I've been doing this from actually before I was at university, but perfected it then. And that gave the impetus, which allowed me to set up uh, my hedge fund, which isn't open to retail clients because hedge funds aren't. They're not allowed to be by law, so don't ask. Um, but we thought, well, why don't we spin out the technology, the data, so people have transparency and control? But let's not charge them fees. Let's just keep it pay once for life. And the way we did it is we said, look, uh, for the first 250, they will have me as their mentor forever. As it grows and expands and becomes global with venture capital investment, all the rest of it, there'll be other people for future people. But for the first 250, it'll be me for life. And there won't be any subscription charges for them because they're the first 250 charter members. For future people, there'll be subscription charges, all the rest of it. Maybe we'll float the company because the asset management industry has got trillions and they've got some big, big ass companies. So we thought, well, Let's make all that available, access all the data, unlimited access to me. The first 250 get unlimited access to me as well. That's why we did it that way. And when I'm on TV, that's what I'm using. I'm using the research of all of this. We had some great, and continue to have, great reviews from everywhere. I thought, well, let's use that, including Coots, okay, uh, and Rothschilds and all the rest of it. And there's actually so much so, we created a dedicated website, alpashpatolreviews.com. I'm going to answer your questions right now. I'm going to run through this really quickly, okay? There you go. Um, lots of lovely reviews from various places. Uh, and so we videoed them because we thought nobody's going to believe this. We've got to video of these people. Uh, and then we launched the program and that's it. And what I do on webinars is give a discount. My ambition is with the hedge fund to get to a billion under management. But if we don't, with the technology on this to get it into a billion dollar company. And the reason I think it's a billion dollar company is because there's a trillion dollar asset management industry which is letting down pensioners. Uh, and obviously, in the future, after 250 people, it will be subscription. It will be far higher rates just because, and it'll be other people mentoring because you can't scale up without all of those things and venture capital investment. But for the first 250 to prove the concept, that's the way I'm doing it, okay? Uh, and that's that's the other way. Now, I'm going to answer some questions for those who want to sign up to this and like what they've heard. If you don't, that's fine. The 1% who sign up make up for the 99% who get the information for free anyway. We thought, well, how do we how do we charge all of this? I mean, given that they're going to get lifetime updates, unlimited access to me, uh, uh, pay once, no fee, and given that a 15% uplift on 100K portfolio is 15 grand, and that could be in one year, let alone every year if they make 15, how do we do that? Given also that they get all the data and, as I said, access to me, unlimited, only for the first 250 uh, people to sign up, how do we do it? We're up to, we're up to a slightly over 200 now, um, and I take 10 at a time. So we said, well, okay, you make 100K if you've got a 500K SIP or ISA, and you make a 20% return, you make 100K. Oh, we can't charge them 100K. How are we doing that? Well, we did that, and okay, that's fine. And all the I've got 18 of these books. Uh, all the stuff's in there. So how should we do it? So we priced it relatively low. An actual fact, tonight... I think it will be tonight. The prices are going up again, I'm afraid. Um, so that's what they are at the moment. But at some point tonight, the IT team will be raising them again. Okay. Uh, 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 and that's what we went with. So because we wanted it to be fair to, and that's where you go. We wanted it to be fair to us. We've got some people who've made a bloody million in a year because they've got big portfolios, especially because the last year. And I think with the program, the closest to the program is people who can do it themselves. You, not your IFA, they're nowhere near it. Fund managers, crap, robot advice, you're the nearest. You just need to fill, turn those four red crosses into greens. Uh, questions while you consider all of that, okay? I want to join uh, all of that. I'm going to ask some questions. Jay, what about Pinterest? Is there profit taking now? Let me have a look at Pinterest. Seems a bit early because I think I only happen to have mentioned it somewhere uh, recently. 
So why would there be profit taking now? No, you're 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 trading. I think your investments. If you're looking at that already, uh, Kishan's asked about Costco, which, as you know, I hold from last year, um, and I continue holding uh, from last year. There is some concern it could. At the moment, I continue holding. So buy, hold, or sell. Would I buy more right now? No, because I already hold some, and it's not, you know, we're in quite a bit, and it's had uh, an amazing run uh, since. Uh, well, look, since January of last year, Costco is up 50%. So I'm not looking to buy more today, uh, but would I sell today? No. Would I hold? Yes, because it's still got some growth, and it hasn't fallen X from why yet okay ravi joining was life-changing thank you very much ravi indeed i'm going to post that up um i really appreciate it ravi you are phenomenal my friend yay that's ravi uh verizon um how about me i've mentioned verizon previously as well friends i have mentioned verizon as you might know previously i've done a projection elsewhere on verizon uh as well and uh uh, as you might know, I also bought Verizon at the start of the year. So that was that. How do you feel about UBS stock? Let me have a look off screen at UBS. Okay, how do I feel about UBS? Let me pull it on there, actually. Let me pull on UBS for you. Uh, it's toppy. So, you know, my concern is it could sell off. Now, it might sell off and then rise, sell off and then rise. I've got JP Morgan, so I'm not sure I'd want UBS as well. Uh, I did on BBC there. I did a broadcast about their uh, earnings last year. It's been so long, I can't remember what I said about it. Uh, but yeah, okay, so not one for me, I'm afraid. UBS, not one for me at all. Craig, do you add to each position in your 12-month portfolio with your monthly one and a half contributions, um, or are you adding? Um, th 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 it depends on how you're doing your own portfolio. The one and a half contributions is an example. It's the fact is most people fill up at the start of the year their sip and ISA and then they just buy. They're not literally adding one and a half each month. But if they were, if they were, then yeah, what you would do is you'd probably say, okay, this month I'm going to open a separate tab for April. I've got an extra bit of money. I'm going to buy this stock for 12 months from April is how you'd have to do it if you got more money during the course of the year. Okay, great content. I'm sorry, but no worries. Alfie, have you got any AI picks? I think I mentioned that. Any active from Agile? Nope. David, where do you find data on high Sortino, high Alpha? Data the London Stock Exchange, and then you use the formula for Sortino, uh, which is widely available. Um, when I did my fund management exams, the for, it's in every um, corporate finance book, uh, what Alpha and Sortino is, or fund management book, and you just take the data in, from the stock price and you apply the formula to it on an excel spreadsheet and you enter it in and it's done it's simple uh eli lily have launched their new product the news part doesn't really bother me um and i won't let it distract me does anyone use any good free software to visualize portfolio holdings i use excel by the way i was asked by this somebody else had asked me this they said do you what what do you use to manage your portfolio i said well excel i just keep it simple um Da, 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 da. Any other questions? Anyone else? Uh, if not, um, how about Palantir? Yeah, I've been asked about Palantir before, uh, about a couple of days ago by people, and I said, I, I, I can't see. I've only looked at the, the price chart on it. I don't see anything. Um, it's got a sell from Jeffries on the 1st of January. RBC said sell on the 22nd of uh, November. Uh, longer term, it's a good company. But in the short term, I'm neutral, as in, if I happen to hold it, I would continue holding it. Would I buy more today? No. Would I sell what I own? No, because if I already hold it, it's not necessarily falling sharply. So it'd be that kind of situation. Okay, thank you very much. For those who are joining the program, let me know. Uh, as I say, we've got to put the prices up yet again, I'm afraid, tonight, because it's been overdue. Uh, 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 and I did give advance warning of that to people well in advance. Um, it's just that the people have made, I mean, thanks to the markets, making phenomenal returns. So it's partly to do with fairness of that. I, I can't say it's because of Middle East transportation problems that our costs have gone up. Although we now give more than we've ever given before because I give the monthly uh, stock market, uh, sorry, I give the monthly uh, 
further filtered list, AI picks and ETFs and broadcast on that as well. So there's every month we're giving more and more and more and more. Um, but anyway, now you know what the overall plan is for the long term is there's a trillion dollar fund management industry, which it's more than a trillion, it's trillions. Uh, and that's why we've got clients from Canada, United States, United Kingdom, Europe and New Zealand, Australia, because this is just such a massive problem of underperformance that's happening that the fund managers, that, that it, it's just too silly to ignore. Okay, so that's where we are. That's if installments, VAT, if you're not doing it through a company, uh, uh, you get VAT back if you do it through a company, uh, or if you're outside the UK, you don't have VAT. If you want to pay in one go, it's that. Uh, we haven't decided yet what that price is going up to tonight so that's with the 40 percent discount it's 18 with the 40 percent discount however uh what it's going up from 18 and what the installments are going up to i do not know yet it won't be a hundred percent but it'll be somewhere between i don't know it'll be up to 50 percent up i'm not sure which um yet because uh, i need to speak to the rest of the team about that okay everyone thank you very much and thank you everybody who signed up i'll see you on the other side uh and everyone else thank you all for getting well a combination of your weekly stock market update and uh the market update and so on so thank you all very much i will just reverse through the slides for in case anybody's missed anything and give you a last opportunity to ask any questions that you might have over here. Okay. Um, Cause I don't want to leave anybody without any questions. And if you have a look at apishpatel.com forward slash links, you'll see where you can download my book for free and a whole bunch of free articles uh, and videos and everything else on there. So at least it'll improve your performance. Whether or not you're not on the program, it doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that you improve the performance of what you got uh, by getting better at this stuff. Okay, if you see him, slap him on behalf of all pensioners everywhere. Uh, or do a citizen's arrest. There we go. Okay, returns, that's what we're looking at. That's what we wanna do, that's what we wanna achieve. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Carwin. Thank you, Derek. Thank you all. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you, my friend. Um, so, and I know I repeat the the education. I, I put the education inside the information because the education is really important. I think if you only give information, say, oh, this is what the market's doing, blah, 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 then it's fine. Obviously, it's fine. But I think it's better to also educate people so they become more self-sufficient every single time as well and that's you know that's really important to me that they become uh self-sufficient more and more okay dun, dun, dun. there we go thank you all uh i don't think i need to go through all of this do i okay and look at the youtube videos to see if your fund is one of the ones which has come up somebody had asked microsoft Let me, there, there's microsoft for whoever missed it somebody missed it earlier didn't they um, Kishin, you miss Microsoft. There's Microsoft. Okay. Uh, and uh, as I said, if you put a gun to my head, I'd buy more, but I'm happy to hold what I've got. And um, yeah, there we go. The The reason we have the seatbelt of watching it every, well, watching it very regularly is we don't want that to happen to us. So we have the NVIDIA strategy, which is if it drops X, we sell Y because now, in the past, I've said, oh, well, no matter what happens with Microsoft, if it drops 10%, 20%, 30%, I just keep buying more. Um, it's a lot easier uh, for people who've got limited capital to say, actually, better you get out and then come back in than, oh, buy more. Because how can, what if they can't buy more? Because what if they haven't got the capital? Okay. Because uh, they don't have dry powder, let's put it that way. So better to use the NVIDIA strategy, get out, and then when we say get in, and we tend to get in a bit late, like that was January of last year. It wasn't right down here in September. Okay, and I said last year, if anybody remembers, I know I'm going to regret saying I wish I ha only had two times leverage Microsoft and nothing else. And in 2023, of course, two times leverage Microsoft and nothing else would have resulted in about 100% return. But you don't just put all your eggs 
all your eggs in just one basket. You don't put one egg in your basket. Thank you again. Love the content here. Ah, oh, thank you, Boesh. My pleasure. And I think I replied back to you late last night. Uh, I think it was about midnight. Uh, your portfolio, you asked for a review, and I'd missed the attachment, and I replied back on your attachment as well. So thank you very much, uh, everyone, and for everybody who signed up. Thank you, and I'll speak to you very soon. Okay, where are we? Thank you.